Okay, welcome back to the channel. And today, we're trying a new airplane. Well, new to me anyway. I'm experimenting a bit here with the face mask too. I put the thinner foam on because I find with the thicker foam, um, I feel like my eyes are too far away from the lenses. This is a little bit clearer now for me. I just have, it's so important to get the headset, when you're, especially the crystal for some reason. It's really important to get that headset in the right spot on your head. Okay, let's hit the center cockpit button. That looks pretty good. I wonder why I'm not hearing any sound. Let me try turning this up a bit. Oh, there we are. Alright, I've got the DMAS headset, so I'm the sound on the DMAS, so I'm quite happy with that. Now, I just have to see if I can. There we go. Okay, let's get in a little bit closer if we can. Good. This is a tail dragger. It's the Typhoon by Messerschmitt. The 108. Kind of a standard setter in the early 30s. Let's see what we've got here. Propeller. So it must be a multi-pitch propeller. Uh, I have to figure out how that works. Start in the engine. Prime the engine. I guess those are keys that we don't need. Magneto, one plus two, okay, so that's the same as both, left, right, etc. Power off. Pedo heat. Generator. It looks like everything's on. The usual gauges. That looks like rate of climb. That would be RPM. Or would it? Guess we'll find out. Yeah. RPM is over here. So that must be. <sighs> oh, I'm not sure. We'll figure it out. I've got my new crystal here, and I'm just not tangling the, the wires on it, or the cable. Alright, let's see if we can take off. Full rich. Oh, oh, oh. I got some trim issues here. Well, I have to say, for me, the thinner mask is better, the thinner foam. It's, um, puts my eyes closer to the lenses which seems to make a big difference for me. Of course it won't allow me to wear glasses but uh, I, don't, I don't wear the glasses anyway. So c'est la vie. We just took off from Vernon in British Columbia which is one of my favorite towns in British Columbia along with Victoria. I lived in Victoria for a year on Vancouver Island. And it's a great place. Wonderful. A lot more expensive now than it was when I was there, just off the Ark and all. Uh, but Vernon is still a pretty town. And there's, there's enough to see and do in it. Close to good skiing, very nice golf courses. And I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing with this propeller. I guess that comes back to RTM, if you read the manual.
pretty nice rate of climb. It's supposed to cruise at about 175 miles an hour, I think. There's the ball, that's good. Turn and bank indicator. I don't think it's got aileron trim, but maybe it's got rudder trim. I don't know. That's probably high enough. Not liking having to I keep trying to get rudder trim in there. Some of the Messerschmitt airplanes, like the 109, didn't have rudder trim, and the pilots would get kind of tired holding the rudder in, I think. I don't see a trim button down here. And fuel tank. That's obviously the canopy latch. Don't want to open that. That's a radio. Transponder, nice. I've got a whiskey compass that tells me I am going southwest. I kind of want to go south, I think. Let's see if we can fly to Kelowna. It's another really pretty town in uh, the Okanagan. The Okanagan's worth seeing. Uh, it's a it's a pretty great place in Canada. The winters are fairly mild. And the scenery is spectacular. Although the sun sets pretty early with those mountains. Looks like I think there was a golf course on our left as we flew over it. There's Lake Okanagan, uh, and there's Lake... What's the one in Vernon called? You know, I can't think of it. But they're nice vacation spots. Kelowna has gotten kind of big and busy and I don't know, it, it wouldn't be my choice anymore. I would take, uh, I would take Vernon ahead of it. Wow, the water looks great. I'm getting 33 frames per second. I can do better than that, I think, but I don't know if I want to. Like for this kind of flag, I don't know that I need to do a lot better than that. Let me just see what we've got here under options. Quality is set. Screen tearing level of detail, 195. I've got it on. I don't think I want to change that. Off screen pre caching, yes. I want to keep that at ultra. That loads scenery in advance. I mean, one day as I was flying over Meg's Field, I noticed under the marine on the marina by Meg's Field that the boats were appearing as I flew over them. <laughs> uh, buildings, high. Terrain vector, high. Volumetric clouds, low. Super sampling, well, that's not set real high. Can I set it higher? I can set it to 8x8, but I don't think I'll bother. I'll leave it at 6x6. Six six. Well, let's, let's leave that alone. Okay, so we'll, as soon as I get, oh, where is my mouse going? I think it keeps moving me to a different window. There it is. So go back. And resume. Okay, wait a minute. Let's do this. Let's go to... Uh, I'm in the uh, OpenXR Toolkit now. And the resolution is set to 3517 by 4162. Which is okay, I think. But maybe I'll just set it down a little bit. I'll set it down to, say, 30... 
3300 by 3954. All right, now I'm going to have to restart VR. Might as well do that while we're paused. One, two, three, four. Give it a chance to know what it's looking for. Try again. I might have to make sure I'm in the right window here. Let's get into the Microsoft Flight window. Try that. There we go. <clears throat> I'm not sure why I'm being shifted to different windows. I know that I do have... Oh, i got to do this again. Okay, that's good. Resume. Let's see if we got any better frame rate now. All right. I'm getting some shimmering, which I don't like. Okay. Here we go. Now I'm going to see if I can get us into um, the mirror view. And that should be... Oh, I don't know how to make it full. Can I make it full screen? Ah. No, that's not all that impressive, is it? Let's go back to uh, the R view. And I have got to figure out a way to make this thing stop rolling to the right. So I'm going to have to read the manual. We've done a 360 degree turn while I was doing that. <laughs> Just because the airplane wanted to roll to the right. Alright, let's let's get back on track. Like an ATC and Vernon and Cologne are both going, tourists. I hate VFR tourists. <laughs> I've got ATC sounds turned off right now. I am going to try to learn how to work them in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020. I've got a radio panel and a control panel from uh, Logitech, which I'm so far moderately happy with. They seem to work okay in Flight Sim, but I can't get them to work in anything else. I'd really like to have them work in uh, IL-2 and DCS as well, but that's okay. Alright, so what do we know about this airplane? Well, I've talked a little bit about it. I have to admit that the... Uh, well, there's the trim we went in. Well, that's flaps and that's trim, okay. So it's got elevator trim, but I already knew that. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to trim it for level flight. No rudder trim though that I can see. So I'm having to keep right rudder in to try and keep the wings level. It would be nice if I had aileron trim and rudder trim. But there's there's Kelowna's airport. In Lake Okanagan, there's uh, a legend about a, a huge monster called Ogopogo, sort of the equivalent to that uh, alleged monster in Scotland. Ogopogo. Some houses down there on the mountainside. I like the Okanagan. The weather's pretty consistent. In Kelowna, it's quite hot. I don't think Vernon is quite as hot. But um, there are towns in the Okanagan that are just blazing hot in the summer. Fairly nice in the winter. Okay. Oh, I never put the gear up, did I? Let's see if. Let's see if my gear works on. What do you know? Well. Cool. Let's see what the airplane looks like on the outside. Oh, nice. It's 
got Swiss livery on it. Well, that's pretty. Okay, back in the airplane. Back to work. Oh, look at the mountains reflecting in the water. The thing I notice in the crystal that puts it ahead of the 8KX is that distant objects are clearer. Up close, you know, things are pretty clear in the 8KX. When I'm looking at the ground immediately near me, it's, it's good. It's not as good as the crystal, but it's good. Objects in the distance are easier to make out, it's easier to figure out what you're looking at, which is kind of nice, I think. I gotta admit, trimming this thing is a little difficult. I take a little getting used to. I'm trying to set up for a down wind leg here. I'm not sure which way the wind's blowing actually. See if I can see the windsock. Is there a windsock? There should be. gear down. Are there flap controls here? EFE. Flaps are working, I gotta that flaps working. Okay. Let's cut the power a bit here. right there by the airport. Nice. I think I've got enough flaps down. Pretty sure the gear is down. Yep, gear is down. You know, I really should... <laughs> I really should read the manuals. I think there is a PDF file that tells you all about the typhoon. I, I kind of do the people who created it a disservice by, by just jumping in and flying. But that's that's kind of the lazy way I roll. Oh, big screen freeze there. Windows must be updating something. I hate when Windows does that. I can't figure out how to make it stop doing that while I'm flying. Oh well.
That's a little better, I think. Kind of wandering around like a drunken sailor here while I, while I learned the, the rudder. I sort of intuitively figured out the prop, I think, to try and get the airplane to slow down. Welcome to Kelowna, friends, in the 108 Messerschmitt Typhoon, in my Pimax Crystal. Parking lot full of cars. They all look kind of familiar. back and forth here to see what's in front of me. Looking for a place to park. Well, this will be all right. park on the grass here. I'm sure no one will mind. There's the windsock. All right. So here we are, friends. Shut the engine off. Let's let's get everything off here. There we go. Well, that's kind of an interesting airplane. I'm going to have to read the manual because, uh, boy, it was not much fun holding that wing down all the time. It was almost like there was no fuel in that wing and all the fuel was in the left wing. It just wanted to roll over. But it's obviously a trim issue um, and it's <laughs> got to be my fault. I just don't know what I'm doing in the airplane. Yeah, that's not unusual. So, here are my conclusions. It's a pretty co cool airplane. Um, I enjoy it. I would use it again. Um, it's on sale right now, I think. Got it at a pretty reasonable price. Um, also, for me, it's the thinner, smaller face pad that I need to use to get the best image. The thicker one for me doesn't work quite as well, although it's it's not bad. And I still got to do a little bit of work on my on my right eye, uh, adjusting the IPD for that. I might have to use the software adjustment on it that I did a video about the other day. Okay, thank you, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Saw a little bit, little bit of the beautiful Okanagan and uh, some bad flying in a neat little airplane. So. Stop by again sometime, won't you? I sure hope you do. And maybe <clears throat> if you like it enough, who knows, you could become a subscriber. One of the several, the proud. <laughs> Thanks for watching.